Good day everybody, this is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the neurovascular structures on the flexor aspect of the forearm. This is the right side, supine cadaver, I'm standing on the right side, I'm the camera person. So let's start with the neurovascular structures as we can see them here. First, let's pick up this, nerve, this structure here. This is the radial nerve. The radial nerve, it goes through the radial group of the spinal group behind the humerus and then it comes anterior to the lateral epicondyle and here under cover of the brachioradialis it divides into a superficial branch and a deep branch. The superficial branch it runs under cover of the brachioradialis and you can see this this is the brachioradialis muscle and it continues and then it comes between in this particular cadaver it is coming between a split portion of the insertion of the brachioradialis and after that it will go to the dorsum of the hand. So this is the superficial fiber branch of the ra ra radial nerve. This is the deep branch of the radial nerve. And we can clearly see it is piercing through this muscle here. This is the supinator muscle. And after it has pierced through, it becomes known as the posterior interosseous nerve. This deep branch, before it pierces through, it gives a nerve supply to the extensor carpine radialis longus. And then after it is pierced through the supinator, it becomes known as the posterior interosseous nerve. And as the posterior interosseous nerve, BIN, it supplies all the muscles on the extensor aspect of the forearm. This deep branch can potentially get trapped between the fibers of the supinator muscle. The next structure that we can see is this one here. This is the radial artery. The radial artery runs from the cubital fossa. This is the cubital fossa and this is the brachial artery dividing to the radial artery. It also runs under cover of the brachioradialis. And we can see as it goes distally, it is enclosed in a tough fibrous sheet which we have removed and it runs and then it comes in front of the radius and then it goes laterally through the anatomical snuff box and it continues into the palm. So this is the radial artery. This radial artery is the one which we feel is the radial pulse in front of the radius. This is the one which is used to measure the count the pulse rate of a person. This radial artery can be used as a pedicle for a myocutaneous flap by plastic surgeons using the brachioradialis. This is also used as a point of entry of the cannula in percutaneous transluminal coronary, coronary angioplasty. So these are some uses and we have also used this radial artery to do a radiocephalic shunt. In this particular cadaver, the cephalic vein is very small and it's not visible here. But in a normal person, the cephalic vein will be present here and we can do a shunt here, radiocephalic shunt for hemodialysis person. So these are some clinical uses of this radial artery. Now let's move medially. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle that we can see here. And under cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris, we can see some neurovascular structures. This structure which I have lifted up here, this is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve comes through the cubital tunnel, it runs under cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris and we can see it is giving some branches to the flexor carpi ulnaris and it also gives branch to the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus which is located here. This is the flexor digitorum profundus. This ulnar nerve goes above the flexor rectangulum and it goes through a Guion canal. Here we can also see it is giving off this branch here, a branch to the dorsum of the palm, which comes from a little higher up and it goes and supplies the medial one fourth of the dorsum of the palm. This is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve can get entrapped in this region here behind the medial epicondyle in this tunnel called the cubital tunnel. The next structure that you can see here is this artery. This is the ulnar artery. Ulnar artery, you can see when I'm pulling, it is exerting traction on the brachial artery. This is the brachial artery and it divides into an ulnar artery which runs between the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus. And then it runs under cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris. And this also does not pass through the carpal tunnel. The ulnar artery is located just a little lateral to the ulnar nerve. When we are doing any surgery on the radial artery, it's always a good idea to do the test whereby we want to see what proportion of the circulation of the palm is provided by the ulnar artery and radial artery. Because the radial artery 
produces the deep palmar arch, the ulnar artery produces the superficial palmar arch, which of course anastomose with each other. The next structure is this one here. This is the median nerve. And we can see the median nerve, it goes between the two heads of the pronator teres, it goes between the two heads of the flexor cut digitum superficialis, and finally, when it comes distally, it is located between the palmaris longus and the flexor carpi radialis. So this is the median nerve. We can give local anesthesia here to produce a median nerve block which will anesthetize a large portion of the palm. We can feel the palmaris longus tendon, we can feel the flexor carpi radialis tendon and we can infiltrate in between the two tendons. This median nerve, it supplies all the muscles in the flexor compartment except the medial half of the profundus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. And this median nerve then goes through the carpal tunnel. This median nerve also gives a branch, which I'm going to show you now. This branch is the deep one. This is the anterior interosseous nerve. The anterior interosseous nerve is given off right at the place where the ulnar artery enters into the forearm. This is the anterior interosseous nerve. This anterior interosseous nerve is accompanied by the anterior interosseous artery, which is the branch of the ulnar artery, and this supplies the three deep muscles of the forearm, namely the flexor digitorum profundus, the flexor pollicis longus, and the pronator quadratus. If this anterior interosseous artery is injured, which can happen if there is a penetrating injury of the arm, we can get what is known as the anterior interosseous artery syndrome, where if you ask the person to do the O sign or the OK sign which involves flexion of the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor pollicis longus he will not be able to do instead he will do this which is called the pinch sign so this is indicative of anterior interosseous injury which is known as anterior interosseous syndrome so these are the neurovascular structures which I wanted to show you in the flexor aspect of the forearm with their respective clinical correlations Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe.